One thing I've learned, if you don't hold their feet to the fire, everybody gets burned. Before you start waving around that freedom of speech thing, when you're in a crowded movie theater and you scream fire, you better be able to smell smoke. If you come on this radio show and you start saying inconsiderate things like that, you better have more behind you, pal, than just your thumb. I've been listening to talk radio for years, and one thing I just can't stand is when the host has to, like, push his way on the people, beat the callers into his way of thinking, extending his ego, or, or when the callers call in and say something so outrageous and the host lets it go unchallenged. The sign you're on the road to truth is the lack of contradiction. You want to find truth, you just don't simply believe somebody because of their authority or their degree or... You you listen to what they say, you test it against reality, and you hold their feet to the fire. We're back on a September or December, sorry, December 1st, 2019. I'm going to um, talk about some current events things uh, this time, bypassing the working on Jesus' words. We'll get back to that next week. But some events have happened that I thought it would uh, be best for me to you know comment on. Most notably, as you might have seen on the opening picture from this uh, audio, uh, turn, shared video, whatever of this, is feet to the fire radio dot com. The actual website has been prevented; has been banned from sharing links on Facebook. Which means, if I or you or anybody would actually post a link to an article or a show from that website, feet to the fire radio dot com, you would get the message that I got, you cannot share this link, feedtothefireradio.com, your comment couldn't be shared because this link goes against our community standards. I wonder what standards I violated. A critical thought on the left in a deep state supporting Donald Trump or, you know, critical thought on Trump, you know, or perhaps critical thought uh, studying Jesus' words, which is the last thing that I started to do the last few weeks. It's, it's the newest addition, and then bam. Now, Feet to the Fire Radio page is still on Facebook, as of this moment anyway. and it. Uh, but all the links to the website, feettothefireradio.com, have been scrubbed. So uh, one might gather that the next step would be to remove the web page and then perhaps me, myself, depending upon what I'm sharing on my personal page. I mean, something to note, InfoWars got scrubbed uh, from all of this stuff, but Alex Jones's personal page is still there because perhaps there wasn't a link they could pin it on. Now, what did I talk about in the last few weeks, or perhaps since I'm not on the top of the uh, noticeable list, maybe they had an AI, uh, went, went through prior links and found something, or, or an individual uh, troll or what have you, went through and found something, reported it, and then the AIs took a peek and said, uh, no, I can't, no, that's got to go. 
So it, uh, would, I don't know what it is. I've, I've asked them. I've written a letter, uh, and I'm getting no answers. Uh, so actually, let me, uh, while I'm talking here, let me take a little quick look to see if I got a message. Because I don't usually use that. Uh, there is an incoming. Let's see what this says. No, it's. There are people who are writing it was it's not um not the website. So I, I don't um I mean I could guess that it's probably all of the three, as I wrote in the post. I probably hit the trifecta by talking about and exposing the critically thinking, exposing uh the left philosophy, you know, deep state, et cetera. Or um uh, supporting Trump, of course. I mean, they're, they're getting ready to the next election, so that's going to be uh, going on. And and Jesus, for that matter, because uh, while I haven't specifically and explicitly gone into trans issues, I'm, there was one uh, website, I think I, I did mention something, one show. So that may, may be the tripwire. It seems like the trans... Uh, movement or the agenda seems to be the latest tripwire on these type of things. But I wrote some stuff down I wanted to go through that uh, I, you know, some of the stuff might be obvious to people. Maybe parts of it is. Maybe nobody put it all together. Maybe they did. I mean, you know, I don't know. I'm just, uh, it's my job here to, when I come up with stuff, to share it. It's basically what I'm here for, so I want to go through a few things uh, here. Well, I mean, first off, the obvious one is, is that they want to re- remove opposition links through the 2020 election season. There's no doubt that the social media, the internet, internet radio alternative to the mainstream publications and radio and videos were crucial in getting the information out overriding the mainstream narrative about Trump. If you actually listen to Trump in his own speeches and read his own uh, speeches, unredacted or edited, it's obvious what they were saying about him is not true. But most people don't, uh, and uh, so they can get away with bold-faced lying or or, uh, selecting out of context. Hold on. That was a yawn and a cough. I don't talk much, I guess, and so when I start talking here, I'm out of I'm out of talking shape. <laughs> but my friends from years ago will probably disagree. But the um, th- this is important. So they're going to cut out everybody. I mean, Alex Jones is cut out. See, but a lot of those, a lot of people like Alex Jones give them fire to work with because of his performance style and his, uh, you know, in your face. He likes to get them all riled up and say things purposely to get them, that really gets him upset. And so he, he helps his self away. But, again, when it comes down to it, the truth will get you in trouble. It's just it's in the beginning, let's say, it's easier to spin it for some people because they give them things to work with. It's going to get harder for people along the way who, who, don't, get, uh, who don't give them Give them that, you know, they don't provide the rope to hang them. But you still get hung anyway. So that's why it's not, uh, it's not something to just to sit back and, like, well, you know, Alex Jones or others, you know, oh, well, I mean, that's the, no, it's, 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 they're the easy, they're the low hanging fruit. They're the most popular. They have the most effect. And certain aspects of the personality and the presentation are easy to exploit in a, uh, in, in lies and uh, disinfo and propaganda. And, you know, once they get through that list, which they have done, I mean, they've taken them off Facebook and YouTube and all that, and they now they're, now they're going through. You know, my, my my show and all that, for all the years I've been doing it, is not that big a, big a deal in terms of outreach. There's probably like 1,800-plus people who are uh, uh, subscribed to YouTube. And then uh, I'm relatively new on uh, Spreaker, and there's probably dozens, a few dozen there. Uh, and uh, there's downloads. People can download other other methods, but 
you know, it's not, not not huge. Yet, yet here I am now. I'm banned from from Facebook. So they're they've gotten rid of some of the low hanging fruit and now they're working their way into tree. I guess. <laughs> uh, so it's not funny. I'm laughing, but it's not funny. So they're going to remove all these opposition leagues. They have to do this for the election because, as you as everyone knows, the mainstream media's ratings are tanking. So they can't count on that as a source to brainwash the rest of the people. Now, when I say mainstream media, people look at the cable news networks, the over-the-air broadcast stations, which are also on cable, have a, have a bigger pull. Uh, I shouldn't say pull. That would be the wrong term. Have a bigger reach, I guess. More people watch, let's say, ABC News than any, you know, CNN, MSNBC, you know, Fox. So there's still... There's uh it it's it's there's still a lot of people getting out there, but it, it is a lot less than it was. It, back in the old days of the three networks, that was it. Everybody funneled in through those in three networks. Now there's all kinds of cable and uh news and then you throw in the internet on there and there's uh, a lot. And uh, also, you know, Fox News, cable news uh is the number one news shows and all the you know uh the main shows at night, prime time. But when you add up MSNBC, uh, CNN, it, it's greater than Fox News. So there's still way more people are watching the MSM ratings, even though the ratings are going down, uh, than are watching, let's say, Fox. But there's a huge undetermined number of people who are in the alternative areas. And I say alternative I'm saying alternative to the mainstream. I'm not going to get into the alt right, white, whatever you know, all that, all that knucklehead stuff. I'm just talking in a, in a more technical sense. So they're uh, through YouTube, the internet, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and all those things. Millions upon millions and millions are being reached instantly. I mean, that's why Trump is on Twitter. They'd love to just figure a way to to, to ban him. Maybe if they impeach him in the House. That'll give uh, Facebook or Twitter, you know, some of the uh, uh, support, uh, internal support, to try and, and ban the president because he being impeached violates their terms of service. <laughs> Even though it's a political uh, uh, impeachment, not a criminal one. So uh, this is what we're, we're in this happening. So as we're, as we're talking right now, this is going on. It has been going on. It is going on. It's continued to go on. Republicans have not done nothing. Uh, libertarian Republican side hasn't done anything to stop this. And one of the, the flaws that have come up here, actually, I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to take a segue here for a minute, is uh, if I can use the old phrase, back in the day, a business did business with anybody provided it wasn't breaking the law. Uh, in fact, a lot of them did anyway. Just didn't. Don't don't tell me. Just give me your money, and we'll work something out. But that's what it was. So if you uh, if you didn't fit into a social norm, but didn't break the law, people did business. There wasn't boycotting on on these type of things. I mean, if you want to go back to the '60s, when you had the lunch counter, uh, where, where blacks would at the lunch counter where they weren't supposed to sit. I mean, th- that's a different thing. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, obviously, that's uh, the, the uh, especially since the civil rights laws were passed, it was obvious those are, those are, do- illegal, those are illegal things uh, because someone sitting there black is not like someone sitting there naked or something or someone throwing food around or somebody screaming or, you know, some kind of disruptive aspect. But that's all it was. If if it's legal, I mean, you want to, you want to deal with pornography. If it's legal pornography, the banks took care of you. The credit cards took care of you. It was like, well, I can't. It's legal. I can't do nothing about it. You know, talk to your uh, representatives. Make it illegal, then I won't. Well, now it's it's now begun. It's got to the point where now these same institutions are used for oppression. To say, like, I don't want you to have this particular ideology. I'm going to arbitrarily call it hate. And I'm going to not do business with you. It's my right to do that. You know that that 
that bakery having the right to not bake the gay cake, whatever it was, was that shoehorn, you know, or that uh, uh, wrench or whatever, uh, pry bar to pry that door wide open. And so now anybody can not do anything. In the past, people were worried about losing business. I want to stay in business. I got to work with, even though I don't particularly like these situations, it's legal. I got to deal with it. If a famous porn star came into your restaurant to eat, provided she was clothed or he, uh, they uh, they still served you. Okay, well, now, you know, if you're a conservative, you walk into a restaurant, they can not only say, we're not serving you, but they could yell at you until you leave. That's completely outrageous. That should be uh, in court. And that person who's opening a, even though it's a, a private entity, you're still opening to the public without uh, a caveat. But then, see, people go, well, yeah, well, now you can have churches. You can, you know, church can't ex- 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 expose uh, trans uh, or gay or what have you. Uh, they can't, they do nothing on abortion. I mean, that this is legal, so you have to do it. You see, how this is the, the mess we've gotten into. But at least with that, I can, you could deal with that. I wouldn't care if I had a restaurant, if somebody came in to eat who was uh, dressed as a trans. I don't care. As long as they're not doing anything that a male or female would be un- unacceptable or just making noise, disrupting things. And that would be the reason, the only reason I would not, not do that kind of thing. And for example, if you want to have the gay cake, as it was said, if you're going to make a wedding cake, <laughs> to so-and-so, so-and-so on their wedding, so what? If you want to have a phallic cake or something like that, you could say, no, I have, I have, I don't do that for for, uh, for either or. You know, you see, this is where it, 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 got, it got sticky now because we've opened the door of, I don't like your ideology, I'll come up with some convoluted way to call it hate or uh, uh, and, and, and oppressive, <laughs> like the okay sign hysterical of course when they say that of course they all the memes come up with all various black notables given the okay sign over the years so but that's where we're in and uh they will not stop you you, you know if you're they're talking about uh, antitrust rules and all this stuff there is a freedom of speech but you don't have the right for example let me let me use this example if you if you walk into a restaurant and you want to stand up and, you know, preach for Jesus or sell your widgets or talk about political stuff and all that, the owner of the restaurant can say, no, you can't do that in here. This is a restaurant. Uh, if it was a a place to go in and talk, and they say, we welcome people to talk about whatever, now you got to, you know, you got something to stand on. And so this is where it gets kind of messy. We'll find out how and how and when and if the courts do this. But the uh, Republican or conservative or liberal uh, libertarian conservative Republican side is sitting on their hands way too long on this one, because once they start, I mean, they're already ruling out people who are talking. It, it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. It's going. It's going to get the. It's going to be where you're going to have all these people taken out. Now let me let me get to this. Boy, I ramble on here. I'm gonna, here. Before I ramble on, I want to get to this list here. This is what I foresee happening. I don't know. Maybe this is a, a new insight or a, additional or, or not. Hold on one second. Here. Oh, I forgot to put it in a mug. Uh, thermos. That's a little hot. The idea of what they're doing is they're creating an information ghetto. They're putting the undesirables over on the other side of the tracks. Only this time, the undesirables aren't being defined by skin color, nationality, or uh, religion, or whatever. The ghetto is being populated by people who don't agree with the powers that be, the deep state globalists. We'll say globalists, okay? The globalism that is now taking over this it's 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 not it's a, a form of communist that's taking over the thing the separator into the information ghetto that is being created 
Now, what is going to happen is people are going to leave Facebook uh, or will be pushed out of Facebook, let's say, for any of the information that is not wanted. You want to talk about exposing things on extreme left. You want to talk about the deep state. You want to talk about globalism. You want to talk about corruption. All those things are eventually, as soon as they can tripwire you out by uh, it just so happens a lot of people who talk in this area aren't uh, aren't supporters of the trans movement being like wholesome or something. So as soon as you're going to be, you're going to say one of these tripwire words and you're out. Now the, the the main reason is because of the uh, opposition to the globalistic, communistic, uh, n- the new neo-communistic system that's being uh, formed here. But the tripwires are going to be what actually gets you out, and they're going to always use the hate speech uh, a variable to go there. Now, the problem is people would say, well, we'll just start our own. Well, there's problems with that. One, the main problem is they want you to not contaminate the unsuspecting public with either A, the truth, or B, just another perspective. So people on Facebook, you know, so for example, they're checking out a certain a, a band or an artist, and other people who are fans of that band or an artist, they're commenting on the artist, then all of a sudden other stuff sneaks in there. Or you go maybe befriend that person, and then there are other posts from their main site come up, and you see, so that, can, quote, contamination will bleed over on other people. And you're going to say, well, oh, yeah, well how could you, wait, when you're, not, you're a pretty cool uh, guy or gal, how could you... Uh, how could you support this uh, racist? And then you start talking, and then you get then all of a sudden they're exposed to information they didn't even know about. They got pictures of you know Donald Trump high fiving with Jesse Jackson and all these other type of stuff. All the years of helping here and all the stuff they didn't know that. Like wow, you know, and my mom's a good example. Democrat for life. Uh, she wrote in Bernie Sanders on the last election. And she's uh, confined to home. I mean, we have to bring, you know, she's, can get up and walk around, but she, you know, she can't go out and uh, drive and all that. She is like hell bent on getting registered and voting for Trump this year because she was exposed through my, me you know, and my, my siblings to stuff that wasn't getting in the mainstream. And uh, the, 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 what got her was I asked her to watch Tucker. Just do that. Just watch Tucker. It's about the she's she's up at that time. She got cable, and she did for many weeks, and was shocked at what she was seeing. I had no idea. Uh, so uh, this that's the contamination that's happening. So right now, uh, Fox. I don't know. I don't know why it's still there, but Fox is still there. I mean, because money's not the issue anymore. If, uh, as I said before, people used to want to stay in business, right? So they'd have to make a way to deal with someone, even if they didn't like their ideology or, or whatever. Now, now money's not an idea. Their money's not, not the problem. I mean, CNN is losing ratings. They should be losing money, right? And I presume they are. The Washington uh, Post and whatnot, you know, part of the reason is that print media is down compared to what it was, and you know, online media is up. But also the um, with the the distillation into uh, different camps. You can't have a newspaper that serves all of them. You got to pick your choice. You got to be left or right. That's it. And with that happening, of course, they're you know they're selling off floors of their of their place. The NFL's down again. Others, other factions involved with uh, all the c- competitions for people to watch in sports. You can. Uh, 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 catch it later. I mean, there, you know. So there's there's more than just the political aspect, but the political aspect's a very big part of it. So it's not about making money anymore. So what they're going to do is they're going to stop that contamination of the unsuspecting public. That's number one. I mean, to me, that's the number one problem. Because when Trump was running for election last time, all this stuff got out, caught like wildfire. People who, who you know, I, I, I'll be honest with you, when Trump ran for, for president, I wasn't even paying attention until he won the uh, uh, nomination. I was stunned. He, why, he what? He won the nomination? I got to check this out. And then the you know, rest is history. So that's the number one thing. Stop contamination of the unsuspecting public by, by being exposed to, 
you know, whether it be literally the truth or at least a, a different perspective of analyzing the information that they already do have. And what the result will be is, well, we'll go, we'll start our own place. We'll go to, we'll go to Gab. We'll go to uh, BitChute, Minds.com, you know, instead of Facebook, Minds. So I think Gab can do both double duty, be a Facebook and a Twitter, Instagram type thing. So I highly recommend Gab.com anyway. But we'll, they'll go to these areas, and that will be part of the ghetto. They, uh, uh, Gab is already under great pressure for being supporting racism, from allowing white supremacists. Now, a lot of these people are knuckleheads on there, are probably trolls doing it purposely, and there's a lot of knuckleheads. Not a lot. I think there's way less white supremacist, uh, honest to God, white supremacist than, than, than it's being given credit for. And a lot of trolls are out there. But nonetheless, there are knuckleheads who aren't like that. And in the adult constitutional free speech world, you don't listen to them. You have a right to speak. I don't have a, you don't have a right for me to listen to you. I can listen to what you're saying. I don't want to hear that. And you just block the person and they're gone. And they could say whatever they want about your post. You block them, they're gone. Now they don't see your post, they don't see you, you don't see them. End of story. This is what happens when you have people outside who you don't like to deal with. You come in your house, you're in your house. You know, you're done. That's the mature way of doing it. But the problem is if if that's how they ran, say, Facebook, Twitter, and all that, you would have the, back to you know back to my first point, you will have contamination of the unsuspecting public. So now what will happen is people will be will be either driven to or choose to go and form places like, you know, will join Gab and other places. It, it will allow people, it will allow them to, with the success of driving people out of Twitter, Facebook, you know, et cetera, it will allow you to quarantine the virus of free speech on these particular formats. Uh, uh, um, uh, formats, uh, forums. So what can happen is now Facebook, uh, for example, Facebook has now banned links to my website. So now anybody who wanted to share information from my website can't on, on all of Facebook. So they do that to Gab. Eventually, and eventually all this stuff will. They do it to Gab, Minds, whatever pops up. That they're doing it, so they so they so they keep the people on Facebook. Because let's face it, the people who are on Facebook that you know they got their family on there, they're putting up their family pictures, talking about music or sports or whatever like that. They're not going to leave Facebook because a couple of their friends are got kicked off for being political, and they want them to take them and their all their family and everybody over to a whole new format. I mean, I know I could do that, but a lot of people don't care. I'm like, well, hey, you know, I, I'm not, you know, yeah, I agree with them. Yeah, they shouldn't do that, but I'm not going to move all away from Facebook, you know. So this is the problem. So you have this quarantine of the virus, as I put it, of free speech. So now they start to cut the ties. Already Gab lost PayPal, private PayPal, nothing illegal. And yet, they're, you know, because they allow real freedom of speech where people have to be responsible to uh, block knuckleheads, now they're, well, well you, you know, we're done, now we're going to, well, it's hard for them to earn income. I literally had to send them a check. Uh, so uh, this is where the quarantine starts. You cut the ties, you, you, you push people off, they go to another platform, now you start to cut the financial uh, life blood to these areas. So it's like, well, you know, you can go there, but the there has cost money. I mean, Facebook, or I mean, yeah, well, Facebook, uh, Google, <laughs> excuse me, uh, Amazon, they have more bandwidth than God, right? So that bandwidth is nothing. Bandwidth is the choking force in media on the Internet. Let me give you just a brief example. You talk about radio and TV, the old days. When you put up an, an, a radio antenna and it broadcasts out, you know, I, I, mean, I just say 100 miles, round, round, round. Every person in that 100-mile radius could listen or nobody could listen 
It doesn't change your operating costs. Now, it'll change your income because if nobody listens, nobody buys advertisement, you don't make any money. But your operating costs doesn't matter. That's why stations want to set up an antenna where their reach goes into a couple of million people from the, from the city. You can have a lower power station actually make some decent money and reach a decent amount of people just because there's a lot of people around. You know, once they can get the name up there, that's where they have the old the old radio stunts where people would sit on a water tower or something and draw, you know, fly a plane around with a sign to get the attention. <clears throat> it's completely the opposite on the Internet. It is very cheap to start up and broadcast your own radio station. Very cheap. You know, almost free. You know, $10 a month. You know, compared to millions of dollars to set up a radio station. But you're limited to how many people you can reach. You know, 50 people, 20 people, and you're done. You can't go any farther. I mean, the rest of the world could want to listen, but it can't. So when you expand your your, your, your bandwidth horizon to allow more people, because on radio, people would listen piggyback on the analog signal, and it wouldn't diminish the signal at all. You have an antenna which would pull in that signal and amplify it and so on. On the Internet, every single listener has a discrete connection to the broadcaster, which would be, in this case, a server. It serves up the data. Okay, Every single person who listens has a discrete, intimate connection from your computer, your phone, your uh, uh, tablet, all the way to their broadcast. There's, it's like, you know, and so when you have Three people, five people listening, no problem. When you have 35,000 people listening, now you have 35 bandwidth connections. You're listening at, let's say, 64 kilobytes per second bandwidth times 35,000. You need to buy more bandwidth. So your costs go up as your listening base goes up. It's the exact opposite. So now you have a uh, an alternative information, critical thought, a uh, website or a, a website are a little different. They're not as bandwidth is still there, but the streaming media is 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 is, is what I'm kind of focused on uh, in, in by comparison. Both ban, both there's still bandwidth on on internet uh, websites, but when people uh, come to that site, you're going to need a charge of ads or something to buy more bandwidth, and now you're still making no more money. And what happens is, of course, your costs rise. Your income doesn't rise at the same time your costs rise. It rises slowly or not at all, and boom, you're done. You're off. And so what the, uh, what they could do literally to help that happen if they were paying attention to the little guys is simply when somebody starts to get a footprint in, and hey, and perhaps maybe this is what's happening with me because my website's under huge attacks now. Wasn't like that before. Not it attacks all the time. So far, uh, the software is, has uh, blocked the attempts to hack it. But what happens is you you uh, you do a um, a brute force attack by having millions of people trying to request to listen. You just request, and then they request again and request again. You could do it all with with access to like if you have a you have a um, access to, let's say, university computers, you can put in a little repeater virus in there, uh, not a virus, but a, a, a malicious code that when you send it a signal, it'll send out a bunch of pings using the huge bandwidth of, of the uh, university or, or co- corp- corporation. Now, just think if you're Google, what you could do nefariously if you wanted to. So that's the problem. So now we have this ghetto being formed, people are going there by choice or by force, now they start to cut off the financial support to handle the amount of people that are trying to uh, listen, and you also start to work on the hardware. Things are much better nowadays, but in the old days, it would have been like uh, shooting, you know, fish in a barrel to do this because the bandwidth was way more uh, tight and rare. Um, So, what can happen on a website is that the people are putting up a, a modest website. 
and the over server, the people who are renting them the space, see the bandwidth is happening is, is, is too much. They're, they're, they're being attacked. Their servers are being attacked because you're being attacked. You're, they'll just kick you off. They're like, hey, I don't want to deal with this. I'm, I'm making, you know, I'm making, uh, you know, I don't know, thirty dollars a month from you for 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 this website. Forget it. It's not worth my headaches. So then you have big corporations who will get in politically and figure they can make some money and be political on it. On let's say the critical thought side. Now what happens to them is whenever you have a vortex of power, you attract psychopaths. And you can see what's happening at Fox with the old man stepping back. The kids are bringing in the um, going along with the global's pl- platform. So eventually Fox were going to fall. Then all the, the mainstream uh, will fall, you know, because Fox is like the only one. And even they got problems, but compared to the other ones. So now you're all Internet. You're all websites. You're all YouTube videos. Oh, no more. You're getting kicked off of YouTube because... On December 10th, they're going to start deleting accounts that they deem not unmarketable. They can't make money on. They're going to start deleting them. Well, there you go. Now you use that excuse, and then you delete on ideological grounds. So YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all these things are, are, are pushing people away. And there are, and there are people who are doing it, but they're going to be constrained by their ability to pay the bills so it's going to have to be the people are going to, have to step up and donate money to them, give money to them. There's going to, you know, if you can't make it through some kind of ad system, and you can't, you're not going to be allowed to get paid through the standard means like PayPal and whatnot, Patreon. Now you're going to have to get direct support from the listener, and so this is where the listeners are going to, have to step up. So now you have this quarantine of the virus entities, and, and you're, you're cutting off their flow of, of money. Uh, the listeners have to now pony up. Uh, and, of course, now you're going to really test test the metal there to see if will they be willing to open up their wallet or they could just go back to Facebook for free and behave, you know. So this is where we're getting the wheat and the chaff uh, is being done here all over the place in various forms. Now so the last thing what will happen is, this is my prediction, is once they are comfortable with the, you know, getting all the malcontents, as I, you know, if I would say deplorables, get them all into these off sites which are quarantined financially and search engines uh, uh, will, won't find them readily and all this other stuff. The last step would be to to pull their domain name. Now, back in the day when Obama was leaving office, he turned over the control of the Internet to a world conglomerate. That alone uh, should, he he should be, you know, attacked for treason. That alone, by turning it over to the globalists, now you're opening up what I can, you're opening up with the this hate speech and all the stuff, they could turn around and say, we don't like what you're doing with your your website and the information, so we're going to pull your domain name. Because you you can't have a domain name. You don't, you know, I got a domain, it's my domain. No, it isn't. You control it. It's like saying it's your house. You can, you can build it, you can paint it, you don't pay taxes, not your house anymore. So, in this case, uh, with, with, with ICANN and the, uh, the domains, it's your domain until they decide you can't have it anymore. Well, that's that's going to be coming where you're going to have domains being pulled. And, in fact, uh, Gab used to be on Gab AI, dot .ai, and dot .ai is a Google uh, suffix. And Google was going to pull their, that, uh, their website or their name because the way Gab was set up is that there is no way to police minors from saying things that they shouldn't because it's free speech, right? Kind of like a voluntary thing. Well, they've come up with ways now to help that, but in the meantime, they got off of AI.ai. I think they still have it, but they've got a uh, gab.com. And what's good about gab is the system of gab is using open source uh, uh, 
Oh, an open source. Um, you know, actually, let me get a, let me let me wait for that. Let me go. Let me get back to what I'm saying about this. I can. So they could pull the website. Another thing they can do is they could use the DNS servers, a uh, dyna- dynamic by dynamic dynamic name server is what it means. DNS servers could not find you. Now, way back in the day when this internet first came out, you were given addresses. There were four numbers with a, with three digits per number with a dot in between. You know, zero five one dot one three seven dot two seven one dot zero zero nine. Right, that was your website. That still is your website address. But I believe it was uh, IBM who invented the World Wide Web. Those people decided to come up with a name, BeatTheFireRadio.com. And but that they still need the number to get to it through the the Internet Protocol. So what you do is you take you type in BeatTheFireRadio.com. It goes to wherever you're typing it into your provider. They have preferred DNS servers that will convert that name into a number, and then send you along your merry way. Now, you don't see any of that because we see the names up in the top or whatever. But all of them have numbers. In fact, up until recently, you could type the number in and go. But in order to stop uh, hacking and, and the thievery and all this stuff by people who had websites without the names, a lot of the uh, web browsers and all that won't accept that anymore. They'll consider it a risk. They won't do it. So... Uh, so what we could could have done was, if they pulled the domain name, the uh, uh, Unix Unix uh, address would still be workable. You could do that. Well, now, now there's problems with that. Well, that would be the final stage: is to start turning off the domains, and it would it would, in essence, make um, make it it would make it virtually impossible for the non professionals to get to it, and for that matter. It would be it would be the end of it. Now I have solutions. <clears throat> One of the problems I have with some of the alternative media stuff is they just they want they just talk about all you know the sky is falling and it is falling. But what about it? But what we can do is back before it was. You know, that's another thing about being older. <laughs> older age has its problems, but it also has good things. I remember back before there was an internet. I was computer active. I had a website what would be called the website today, actively up and people could dial in through a modem to get to it. That's how it was done. And, and then they came up with multiple modems. So you had two or three phone lines, four phone lines, people could dial in and it would be automatically chase the number and go to the next one. This is how it all started prior to uh, the Internet. Now, since we still have the Internet, and even even in the event of ICANs and all this other stuff, you could run the software like they did back then, which would, for example, uh, FidoNet was a name, and I forgot what the FIDO stood for. It was a, an acronym, but FidoNet, if you if you had a website and you joined FidoNet, what would happen is people would call your board, they would post, read read messages, just like Facebook. You would, you would log in, whatever you want to call it. You would read the messages and all that, and then at nighttime, they would shut the board down, I don't know, 2 in the morning, or, or maybe they would uh, let it keep it up, but they would stop. You know, that would be the cutoff point for the data that was going to be shared. They would call a common node with their uploads, and that node would correlate all of the new information on all the boards that have been shared. Because, you know, you'd have a FIDO board and you would have a, a non FIDO board. That would stay local. FIDO board goes national, international. Then that node would call another node internationally, and they would send the data information. So overnight, what would happen is you would come into your computer in the morning or, or in the afternoon, whenever you would do it, and you would see responses from, you know, you know, Russia, Poland, you know, whatever, to your posts who use this type of system. Now, we could still do this. In fact, as far as I talk to my sister, who was into, into this final a lot, Internet's still around, and you could use the internet instead of long distance phone calls to update the data. So you would bypass the normal use of the internet while using it. If you look at the internet, the internet has the name. The internet is, is is difficult to understand. The word server is another one. 
There's different kind of servers. There's a server that will send out the data. There's a server that will that will hold the web server. There's a you know there's all these different. They all use the same word, so it kind of gets goofy. But on the internet, the protocol that works for websites is the hypertext uh, hypertext transfer protocol (HTTP). There's FTP file tra- file program fire tr- file transfer protocol, right? There is the streaming one, which is RSMP, and I, I forgot what it is. I don't know what that, I forgot what that said, media stream or whatever. They all use the internet to go through. When you have, uh, if you have cable nowadays, cable is going through the internet, but they have their own protocol, their own setup that goes through the wire. If you can look at it, look at it in terms of how we tra- travel, you have cars, you know, you have bikes, you have planes, horses, you know, whatever. And But you're still going through this, you know, the same, you know, I'm going to Chicago to Philadelphia. I could walk there, I could take a bike there, I could drive there, I could fly there. Uh, it's It's different ways, but you're using the same concept of going here to there. And the Internet in a, a sense, provides that tube. Look at it as a pipe that sends information through. There's various ways to do it. If you have, uh, for example, you have a phone on the Internet now. Most phone calls don't go through the old wire anymore. They use, uh, if you have a DSL, you go from that same wire, it goes into a connection at the end of your block or a block away, and then it converts it back into Internet stuff. So what happens is, you could use the protocols. Of, uh, well, I'm saying a FinalNet type protocol. I have not talked to people at FinalNet, so I'm using it kind of like saying Kleenex or tissue. You could develop a protocol which could still send information through all the webs and would be not limited to. It would be cheaper <coughs> because all you need is a regular Internet connection to send text. Well, you know, we'll just keep it at text for now. And then you can work on sending media, uh, uh, you know, because there's a lot of compression where you can do, especially if you want to talk about non-music, you know, voice. So there's a way to do this, and we should start doing it now. And, I, you know, and I can't because I'm not technically savvy in it. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like aware of all of this, but I can't do it. I can't even begin to do it. So uh, if you're... It, it, the courts, if, if they go, if they go to the courts, and the courts somehow deem that, like a Facebook, has to let people go in there and talk about opposing views, you know what could happen? <coughs> Ideally, is Facebook would just shut down. I'm not going to do that or whatever. But it's still you, somebody else would pick up the ball. Remember, you remember Tom, Tom over at the what's it called MySpace? That was the big thing, and all of a sudden, boom! There's Facebook, right? Now, I don't know if the courts will do this though, because it uh, it's it's complicated. Luckily, we got Trump had put up a lot of constitutionalists in there. But you're going to be going, you're going to be talking about private property, doing a public service, and that is a can of worms because now you're going to have Catholic hospitals mandating to give abortions or shutting down. You're going to uh, uh, have fundamental Baptists required to get, do uh, marriages. You know, there's going to be they're going to use those tools to try and smash the system. So it's a very difficult way to to say, I have my freedom to not do this. And because I have this giant reach of a Facebook, now I can control what people do on my Facebook because it's private property, so to speak. It's again, like I don't have to serve whoever I don't want to in the restaurant. Now, years ago, you had to serve them. You know, you want to, you want to, you had to sell to anybody regardless of their religious being, their ideology, their color, you know, all that stuff. Well, this has all been pulled in again and it's being helped by the left who talks about having all black only, no whites and all this stuff. It's okay to pick on the whites, but in, in reality, what you're doing is you're setting precedent to being able to filter anybody out for any reason. And the globalist ideology will be that final reason. This is why it's so tremendously damaging. Now, this is where 
one of the reasons I don't go, like going into Q and all this stuff because they got Q. Everything's gonna be fine and dandy. We're wonderful. Everything's gonna be great. Jesus is coming. He's gonna pull everybody out of here. Everything's gonna be wonderful. These type of ideologies and theologies alarm me because historically, it's never been fine. <laughs> it's gone through a lot of hell, and from that hell has come out fine. And I think we're going into this. The only difference would be if it's the final throw of the dice, so to speak, the final lunge where things end and there is intervention. But uh, people have depended on that before. But it, 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 I get uneasy when, it, when, that, when that stuff's talked about. You know, I, I believe in, uh, you know, Jesus, God, the whole nine yards. I would love to have Jesus come by and take everybody home. Hey, I'm on. I'm in. You know, so it's not like I'm having a theological problem because I got some kind of axe to grind. I just don't think that's the way it's going to be. Now, in future shows, I can lay out my case, not that it'll necessarily be popular or whatever, but nonetheless, I can lay it out anyway. But my point here is to warn about the coming sterilization of public dialogue. Meanwhile, (laughs) we're having the opposite of sterilization of the public, you know, with the defecations and and whatnot on the streets, and it's okay to have the homeless, it's okay to have knifing and killing. It's like, uh, you know, they had had these attacks in London, and there's the mayor in London going, well, you know, our diversity is our strength, and this is one of the things of being in the metropolitan area. No, it isn't. No, it wasn't. Uh, So, uh, and this is where Trump comes in. This is the funny part about Trump is Trump to me has more of a spiritual uh, uh, goal unbeknownst to even him. It's, you know, what's going on is that Trump is, is a lot of stuff he's talking about is very true and good, but you have to step over him. People don't like him, but they have to like ignore him and his personality, but uh, approve of uh, and, and support the job is and stuff. I mentioned about Alex Jones. I have a hard time listening to Alex Jones go into his rants and raves, but I want the data that he was is presenting. So, you know, sometimes I can't, uh, you know, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take, I gotta go. You know, and then there's people like, uh, David Knight in the morning, who's fine. He's someone that you can, you can, you don't have to do that to, but this is, this is what it is, is do you want truth or do you want the package to be pleasing and so when Trump's coming in here, he's ruffling up all the people who are slick and liars and, and cheats. And you could see they're being, they're, 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 it's belying. He's belying. They're belying themselves. They're, they're coming out and taking off their sheep's clothing and exposing the wolves one after another after the other. And again, I think this is his main function. Not even necessary to succeed, but at least get this information out. The people could be eyes open Oh, I understand now. Now I'm going to make an informed decision to go along with the corruption uh, because I want this or that, or I don't want this this uh, discomfort, or I'm going to stand against it, and make a stand on it. Uh, so you're going to find people making a stand better, not necessarily a, a violent stand, but making a stand on their principles, like Gandhi, you know, like uh, Martin Luther King in the, in the early days, where they just would not not sit at the chair or God, he would, they would go get salt even though they weren't supposed to. And they would be beat up or killed. And the next guy would get up and go get salt. <clears throat> Finally, what, what, what left, what soul they had left in, in England, what soul they had, they said, we can't do that. We got, you know, we got, we can't do this. You know, it got to them. And so this is why you're seeing things come out where they're admitting about late term or, or post abort, post birth abortions, because it's all, it's all a, it's been about, always been about that. That's not new. What's new is them admitting it. Again, this is this era. This is this revelation, the, the apocalypse that's coming. And Trump is one of the guys, one of the horsemen of the apocalypse, so to speak. I mean, I'm not going to literally say that, but, you know, in, in, a, in a, at least looking at what's going on, the word apocalypse means to reveal. He's one of the people, he's the precipitant, he's the aggravant, he is the, um, what's the other word, uh, Catalyst for people revealing themselves and finding out what the real deal is. You know, so he's, he's got a multi hat. A lot of it's not pleasant. 
either to for him or for those around him or, or you know, but this is what's going on. So it's very, 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 very important to understand this, that, <coughs> excuse me, I am not on these guys. Everything's going to be fine. They're going to come up with all these, all these, uh, uh, they're going to arrest these people. They're going to Guantanamo. They're going to have uh, tribunals. Ain't going to happen. I'll be happy if it happens. It's not going to happen. I'm telling you, it, it, historically showing that you have to have the war before the tribunals. And we're going into that aspect of it. You're going to, you know, here's a here's a, a, a Daily Mail in the UK. As you report to clear FBI is spying on Trump in campaign to, to probe Russia tie. And then they're going to say stuff like uh, they made some mistakes. <laughs> well, I don't know. This could be not true because it's, it's it, you know, it's not leaked. It's not out yet. So this could be, you know, according to people familiar with the report, you know, and that could be all crap. Just like it could be crap that they're going to arrest all these people and this is all going to happen. That's there's, there's no you know when the you know the ninth when the report comes out of the IG that's the first one of it. Now you'll start to see that'll be the reality. That'll be the step into reality when the X report is out there. Now there's no more people coming up with all this. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Baldera, I'm trying to think of whatever. So this is what you have to look forward to. I think it's interesting. It's going into winter. Hopefully because of what's going on and how it's going forward, we'll hopefully we'll get through this winter without having major eruptions. I'm, this is a guess. I'm looking at it going in kind of a guess and a hope. But look for all hell to break loose uh, by the election next year. Next year, next winter, and you're in the north, you better have fuel and food and whatnot. All right, you just better because... When uh, when the power goes out, you die in the north. All right, you're not discomforted; you die. Uh, so you may have you may have it, it, it might not you know, this winter might happen. But uh, also, I want to mention there's an article. I'll, I'll post a few links uh, at the bottom of the show. There's an article on Oriental Review, which I'm not sure what the I think it's from in, in it's it's from the Easter you know Asia East Eastern based, but it's a very interesting take on Trump. Very interesting, and I would recommend reading it. I'm going to make a quote from it about his strategy. I could make a quick and accurate analogy with medication. Most pills are designed to cure a problem, but come with an array of secondary after effects. While Trump is using the medication solely for their after effects, while the first intent of the pill is what's keeping him in power and alive. By the end of this article, you'll see the metaphor applies for just about every decision that your movie's made. Once you understand what Trump's about, you'll be able to appreciate the extraordinary presidency he's conducting, conducting like no predecessor even come close. So he is prescribing the pills for the situation by the after effects so that the primary prescription will placate or pacify the deep state while he works at it. And the example they give in there is that he wanted to pull the troops out of Syria. The deep state and others had a, had a fit. But he said, okay, well, you know, they said on the air, well, we'll just we'll leave some in the oil fields to get the oil, you know, which people are, are around the world are going, well, you know, that's like piracy. That's like occupation, I and mean, that's bad. So what's happening is, by him saying that, the side effect will be pe- the, it'll be growing support for them to leave Syria, both domestically and abroad, because of that picture he painted. All the while, staying in there to keep the deep state somewhat placated, and when the public opinion and and, and the domestic opinion get bad enough against it, the deep state will have to let go. You see, this is this is that kind of thing. a very good article. I you know I hope he's right. Uh, he or she. I hope so, <clears throat> because we're, you know, we're in a heap of trouble if this stuff doesn't work out. Uh, so, yeah, here's Marie, Marie Le Pen, who's running, uh, who will be running in, in uh, France. The divide is no longer between left and right. It's between patriots and the globalists. And, and that's something you have to understand. The left is being used 
by the globalists. The right in various areas, the neocons, are part of the globalists. The, you know, the, so it's it's not right or left. It's globalists and, and nationalists. That's the real demand. And because you, you have to kind of refocus to be able to re refo- uh, to re view that. So, all right, I think I'm going to let it go there. Uh, I'll probably get back to the uh, Jesus stuff next uh, next time. But I, you know, with the being uh, kicked off. Facebook and all that, it kind of got me, and I've been, th- I talked about, you know, if you listen to shows religiously, everything I said in there, you probably heard at some point, but I just thought I'd put it all together and uh, uh, kind of lay out a roadmap, what I think is coming down. So if we start going down a roadmap, you could use it and plan ways to avoid it, you know, trying to help on it. Uh, so, all right, I will... Uh, I will, I'm going to go and upload this and whatnot. And remember, we have, it's a speaker, starts the audio, it goes to Facebook, and then it goes to BitChute. I highly recommend people get a BitChute account as well as Gab and to start to use that as you can because um, I actually like the software. Uh, try to support them as best you can because... At this point, I'd rather have you support them than me because I'm working and I'm keeping the lights on. And uh, they're going to have a harder time keeping the lights on unless somebody doesn't support them. Uh, so, of course, I always welcome support. <laughs> but, you know, hey, this is, a, this is we're really in a war. This is actually a real, honest-to-God war. It's just a, a, a different take on it. It's all of the wordplay prior to the physical manifestation. And depending upon the wordplay, you can avoid the physical war, or it could be won easily, or it can, you know, it could be terrible. It could, it could be, it could be uh, centuries in the unmaking. So, anyway, God bless, take care, and we will see you uh, next time. Fire is a production of IPS Media Works on the Onsig Radio Network of Stations.